So, you want to play Conqueror's Blade, or you've just started playing, and you don't know what weapon to go. We are going to go through every single weapon, what it does, what it's good at, what it's bad at, the meta with it. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Starting off with Short Sword. Short Sword is the big boy tank. Uh, he is the boy you put on capture points or defending points to hold it for as long as he can. Uh, in terms of abilities, skills, it's very cookie cutter uh, and there's only really one way to go. That is starting off with shield throw. Throw your shield, slows enemies, little interrupt, like little um, stagger. Um, Captain America. Fantastic. Second up, shield charge or shielded charge. This is just a charge forwards, increases your defense while charging and knocks your enemy down, finishing off with a big slash. Um, yep, yeah, it's a must have. As I said, cookie cutter. There's no other way to play um, so, uh, short sword and shield. Uh, now the big, the big one, iron sides. This is arguably your best or second best ability you've got um, basically makes you unkillable for eight seconds um, so yeah very very good and completely needed uh, and last off the only ultimate you'll need to go for thunderstruck thunderstruck basically is your uh, your key to breaking open shields you will never yeah, you will you will do this and you'll charge your men through the gap you've made. Or you'll do this to stop somebody's charge. Um, so very good support. Uh, short sword is yeah, it's a good solid brawler. Um, defensive brawler, that is. Um, so if you're thinking about taking this and you want to help your team out, dive on points. Um, just be a general nuisance in terms of people trying to kill you. Short sword is for you. Glaive. Glaive can be a burst damage or a support for your units and your team's units sort of class. Kind of a hybrid between the two. Um, <coughs> Glaive has a few more options than Short Sword. Um, with a few abilities that are a must-have. Uh, in terms of abilities, you can change them up a little bit. There, it's a bit more, yeah, diverse in that, in that sense. Um, but... Essentially, you're going to be wanting to keep, you're going to want Warlord's Greeting, 100%, non-negotiable, uh, as a concussive, big slash down into a concuss that allows you to land other abilities. The other one that isn't so locked in, but is kind of locked in, is Iron Re uh, Flying Reaper. Uh, this is where you would, you leap in the air, it's your big ultimate, and it does a lot of damage. Uh, now... There's two, the next ability is, you can go for something else, but Shieldbreaker seems to be the one that most Glaives go with. Um, and the last ability can be changed up, sort of, for what you're doing. So if you're focusing more on buffing your troops and sort of uh, helping the team out, then Gods of Battle is the way forward. Uh, it also buffs you, but it, you know, 15... 
15% uh, more damage for your troops for 10 seconds. Incredible. You know, you do that in a big push, and you it's it's a lot of difference. Uh, if you want to go down a bit more of a selfish route or a defensive route, you can go for Heat of Battle. Um, this this gives you a m massive defense, gets you up if you get knocked down, uh, can push back enemies, um, and makes you immune from days. So it's pretty nice. Three seconds of being 26% damage reduction, that's very good. And then 13 seconds of 13 damage reduction, really nice. Um, so they're sort of two very good options. I know some people go for Arc of Steel. I wouldn't bother, but it looks cool. So you do you. And then um, Charge, very rarely I see this. But, I mean, it can be good to get out of the battle. Um, definitely. So, and Glaive uh, benefits massively from opening up on a horse. So you want to open up on the horse, swing, uh, do the little horse dancey swing that's uh, on there and then jump off with a slash into a warlord's greeting uh, and that is glaive um, in terms of uh, current placing it's in a bit of a hard spot so if you're new I would probably advise not going for glaive at this current point in time um, if you do um, yeah just sort of keep your distance dive in when you have your cooldowns come jump back on your horse do a little slashing on your horse wait for your cooldowns jump back off your horse and do the thing just kind of be a bit wary now the other thing that's interesting about glaive it is a heavy armor user some people will do glaive with uh, medium armor for the extra for the extra bit of damage um, it can make flying reaper do a lot of damage but then obviously the issue with Flying Reaper can be hard to land. Um, I probably would advise going heavy armor in this current state of the game. Um, it seems to be the dominant... Well, it doesn't seem to be. It is the dominant armor at the moment. Yes, you'll miss out on a bit of damage, but you will survive a lot longer. More time to do something with your troops. Pike. Uh, Pike is a season 8 unlock weapon um, that relies on combos. So it doesn't have abilities to choose from or anything like that. It's, you've got your four abilities um, and very minimal choice. The, the only choice you get is between two different ultimates. Cold Dragon that I wouldn't uh, advise going for. Get yourself Green Dragon for the maximum penetration. Um, and then following up from doing this you get a uh, a new ability that would be a either so once you've done your ult you can either sort of stab and knock down do a, ver a second large um, dash with your uh, pike through them or you can do a big swishy um, thing to sort of move units out of the way all three are very good uh, if you're 1v1ing uh, you're gonna, you're probably gonna use Sky Dragon to put them on the ground. Uh, if you're maybe wanting to go through the neck, go through the back of the troops once you've come through them, you'd probably use Water Dragon. And then if you go into the middle of a large clump, you'll use uh, Wandering Dragon to move everything out of the way so you can make a hasty escape. Um, mobility of Pike is incredibly good. You can just spam uh, Wandering Dragon and dive on backwards and it's it's very effective um, but the main thing to do with this is combo skills so you might do one wandering dragon into a water dragon and then finish off with a sky dragon uh, this is a really easy class to play but a really hard class to master a bad pike is easy to kill and a, a good pike is like one of the hardest people you'll fight so it's got a very high skill season, uh, um, ceiling, but uh, yeah, it's um, if you enjoy it and you can get good at it, then it's it's a very dominant weapon. Um,
but uh, yeah, easy to play, hard to master is what Pike is. Um, now, on in terms of horse abilities, you've got one of the best ones in the game that is to knock. Um, you can knock enemies off their horse on no, basically no cooldown. It just uses a bit of energy. Um, so that's really, really nice. Uh, and then you've got a knockdown dismount. So again, very nice. Um, so that's Pike. Longbow. Now, in terms of range, you've only got three range classes to choose from. Um, but Longbow is probably the highest skilled cap um, range weapon in the game. Uh, it's got a few different choices for uh, skills. <clears throat> we have, starting off with uh, Marksman, that is a must-have. Basically, makes you uh, can do a fully charged um, uh, shot of any of your abilities or just an auto attack uh, straight away without needing to charge it. That's very, very good and is a must have. Uh, Bob Canaro is the one I roll with. It's basically the longer you hold it, it concusses and allows uh, reduces the enemy's defense by 30% for seven seconds. So that's incredible when it comes to the next bit, um, the next ability because then you basically make them into a wet noodle that you can put your fork through. Um, so yeah, that's. But this is one you can change up. I know some people run uh, flaming hour instead. Personally, I like Bobkin because he gives you that uh, that stagger. Um, that's really nice. Uh, so we're gonna go with Bobkin there. Uh, light footed is a must have um, to to get yourself out of you know out of any tough situations. Makes you immune to attacks for one second after using it. And increase your speed by 35% for three seconds. So basically, you become very speedy and you can get yourself out of a situation that you probably shouldn't be in. Uh, and now you can, there's two ultimates, of course, and there's uh, there's kind of different, very different uses for the two that's really nice. Lightning Bolt is a, a bit of a hero killer, um, but it can go through a lot of enemies. So if there's a very you know expensive range walking away and they all seem to line up in a nice little row, you might consider dropping a lightning bolt through all of them, and if you hit properly, you'll you'll kill basically all of them, um, five to twelve enemies. Uh, but this thing will hit like a truck. If you bobkin someone, lower their defense, pop marksman into a lightning bolt, you you can you can almost one shot at well a light armor. You can one shot light armor pretty much, um, but don't be fooled by that. Because this is a very hard class to play. You'll feel useless and you'll need to be on this for a long, long time to build up the muscle memory to and the patience to um, to get good at it. Um, so probably the highest skilled capped class in the game. So would not advise for you to go uh, bow. We call it long bow because there's another bow in here called short bow. But it's, they just call it bow. But it, we're going to call it longbow for this purposes. Um, yeah, high skill cap. So if you're new, I do not go for this. There's there's another one that you can go for that if you really want to play range. Um, as I said, not many options, and bow is probably the only one with proper range. Um, so yeah, um, but I would hold off for the meantime with bow. Dual Blades. Dual Blades is my main class. This is what I play most of the time. Um, it's meant to be sort of an assassin, and it, it is to an extent. It's definitely lost that title slightly in the past few seasons. Um, essentially, what you are now is sort of a guy to catch people out of place uh, in the sort of the big uh, mosh pits. You'll catch people out of place, but you're also there for... Uh, bow shuriken that's basically an AoE um, and with the two extra runes you get 30% damage and cooldown reduce and um, uh, or 30% damage and 15% um, it lowers enemies attack 
you know, they're damaged by 15% for three seconds or something like that. Uh, and then there's another one that increases the range and lowers the cooldown. So essentially this is on a 3.2 second cooldown and uh, it's also lowering everybody's attack. So I guess it's useful. It's about the useful thing we can do. Um, so this currently is a must have because it's your high, one of your highest damaging abilities in my opinion. I know some people change up, change it up for something else, but the days of us going invisible and doing lots of ambushes and stuff like that is is sort of over. We are we are just a throwing and catching people out of place sort of sort of place. Oh, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. Um, next up, we've got uh, chemical vapors. You're gonna need this. Otherwise, you get knocked down, you're instantly dead. And with the amount of mauls at the moment, just knocking everyone over, um, it's absolutely insane. So you're going to need to be able to get off the ground, um, unfortunately. I would love to be able to go for Infiltrator and sneak around, but doesn't have a get off the ground. So, um, yeah, it's uh, Vapors. So we kind of, we, we no longer use Stealth that much in terms of, like, for a long period of time. We only get it for three to... To 1.2 seconds. Oh, and the other thing, sorry, with bow shuriken is it makes you go invisible every time you throw it. You go invisible. Um, now there's choice here. Uh, butterfly, you can go for Skylark if you if you like. But to be honest, Butterfly is better. Skylark is just fun to use every now and then. To be honest, you get some from behind. It can do a lot of damage. Uh, you can't be blocked, so if you're struggling with people blocking, what you'll find is a lot of people. Uh, 1v1 will put up block because they can block your bow shuriken. So if you had Skylark, it's a good counter because they, they keep their block up. You throw one of those, you hit their block, and then you charge at them with this and uh, basically hit through their block. So that's always a possibility. I know some people also are running um, Great Thunderbolt in this spot and not having a direct damage ability. That's cool. Um, increases your... It still concusses the target and then increases your damage by 20% uh, on that target um, for four seconds. Personally, that needs to be six seconds. In my opinion, that, that damage debuff needs to be uh, longer, not higher, just longer. Four seconds is not enough, considering if we're looking back at the bow that we saw just earlier. There on Bodkin Arrow, they get seven seconds of 30% damage reduction. Uh, uh, defenses, 30% defenses on the target they hit with it. So to only to have an 18 second cooldown thing with a 20% damage buff for 4 seconds doesn't really make sense. So if they buffed this then I would probably consider doing this but they, no. Um, so we'll just stick with the butterfly. And then obviously the only ult to go for is Mark for Death. It's literally how you secure your kills and it's what makes you a dual blade. So nothing else. So basically as it stands, uh, 3 abilities are necessary and you have a bit of choice with five um, if you're willing if you want to play this as a new player I probably wouldn't straight away like I would actually stick away from all of the light armors early doors um, coming into the game uh, stick with heavy or medium because light light armor is in a really bad spot at the moment we uh, we're meant to be light armors to take to get, obviously we take a lot more damage than everyone else, but we can also output way more damage. And that, for some reason, isn't the case anymore. We're, we're not outputting a, the enough damage to make it worthwhile being light armor. Um, slightly different if you're in a bow, if you're playing bow, because you're away from the fight. Um, but, yeah. Um, it's uh, the damage of bonuses of being light armor do not, you know, they don't justify... Uh, being as squishy as we are now. Musket. Now muskets are a really interesting one, and I really like musket for these for these reasons. It's probably the only weapon in the game that has two completely different playstyles that are both viable. Um, 
So your first one would be the aggressive musket. Um, that is what we have set up here. Uh, now this is your hero killing musket and um, yeah, your frontline sort of musket. That is uh, fine gunpowder. This obviously just allows you to reload instantly. Um, yeah, because obviously those long reloads, it's got about 1.5 second reload time, I believe. I think it's about that. So this allows you to just slam your gun on the ground, get a reload and get an increased damage by 16%. That's really, really nice. And you can combo this into, into multiple shots from first shot into a fine gunpowder, into another shot, and then into a scatter shot that you would get the bonus of the 16% increased damage. That's really, really nice. Uh, onto the next one, scatter shot. It's a must have for this build. Um, yeah, it's just your shotgun, five second cooldown, use it all the time. Really, really nice. Does insane damage when hitting someone in the back. The thing about musket though, must say, just before we go any further, is <clears throat> you're not really a range class. If you're playing this in graphics as a build, you're up front with, with the dual blades, with with the with the tanks, you know, with the mauls and that sort of thing. You need to be, you're just picking up, seeing people, picking up the kills. Um, you're not a unit fighter. Don't even bother. Um, unless you see a group of archers and you can drop your grenade over. I would just stick to hunting out the heroes in the group and uh, shotgunning them. Um, anyway, next ability, skirmisher. This is if you get stuck in a situation or you're trying to stop a cav charge. Um, it drops uh, a nice slow on the ground. Uh, cow drops. That's really, really nice. Stops cavalry charges. Uh, and it obviously gets you out of uh, gets you out of a tough spot, um, so it's a it's a definite must have. Um, then we here come on to black powder grenade. This is your only alt ability you're going to go for. Um, uh, it's incredible. It's really good. Knocks everything to the ground. You throw this, knock them to the ground, walk right up to their face and shoot them. Um, kills will kill an entire stack of archers in one shot. Will knock down the front of shield walls. It's just a really generally a uh, really nice ability to to play with. Um, and now on to spec two, that would be uh, the support build. That would be um, Caltrops, Liquid Fire. Um, so by just changing two abilities, you've to totally changed your playstyle. That's crazy. So now, <clears throat> now you're looking for. Um, you're looking for like cav charges and to slow pushes. You're looking for archers and stuff to throw your liquid fire on. You've obviously got your black powder grenade that you're gonna be chucking on troops. So this is what I call the support role. This is, you're, you're there in the group, but you're purely around to basically stop the enemy's pushes um, and you know, chuck your grenades over the back lines to, uh, to hit the, um, the range over there. Um, so, yeah, this is the second spec that is uh, really nice. So if you're a new player and you want some sort of support uh, role um, and you're not too bothered about using a weapon, or if you want a, a versatile weapon that you can do two different things for in separate games, then musket's for you. But saying that, musket is really not for everyone. Um, it's kind of hard to get used to to start off with. So I would say this would be one of those weapons you'll pick up later on in um, in your kind of CB career, let's call it. Um, it's something that you'll get killed by one, or one will stop a cavalry charge and you go, or kill your entire stack of archers with a grenade. And you'll be like, hmm, maybe I should give that a go. Um, so yeah, musket. Shortbow. Shortbow, if you must go range, I would say, and you're a new player, this is what you're going to have to, you're going to want to go. It's easy enough to play. Damage is a bit lackluster. Accuracy is a bit lackluster, but it is, um, it is sort of not as hard to play as the longbow, uh, and it's not as close range as the musket, so it sort of gives you that little bit of variation. Um... And it's fun to play. It's very, um, it feels like, you know, you're just firing a bit of a machine gun. That's quite nice. Um, so abilities wise, it's kind of, 
It's got one ability you can change around, the rest I would say is kind of meta. Uh, stunning shot is a definite must have. Just hit those heroes down and yeah, you do yeah some good damage and stun them. That's nice. So you can't complain with that one. Steel tip arrow, yeah, another must have. Uh, goes through two enemies, it's your high hitting um, sort of low cooldown ability. Um, it's really nice, really, really nice. Uh, and um, yeah, so one way to hit through heavy armor and it allows you to get that little bit more lo like long range. Let's say there's a tower and it's being pushed. Uh, this is your one way you're actually going to land some good damage on the peasants pushing it. Uh, and then I go for throw bowler. That's uh, you throw these sort of balls at um, at the enemy and knock them over. It also pulls people off horses. That's good too. Can be kind of tricky to land sometimes because it's got a bit of a slow travel time, but um, it's uh, it's fun. It means you can actually potentially land the kill on the heroes um, because your damage is very low and everyone's playing heavy armor at the moment. So you'll find um, it can be a little bit tricky to land those land those kills unless you're in a big mosh pit and you're just sort of aiming at people hoping that they're going to get low by someone else and you can steal the kill um but the other one to go for that's much more meta probably is rolling escape this is probably the best escape ability in the game considering it's a seven second cooldown removes days removes knockdown removes concussion increases your movement by 20 percent for three seconds and makes you immune to damage uh, for 0 0.8 of a second um on a seven second cooldown really really nice like gets you out of a lot of bad situations um so the two yeah that's what i'd say your two choices there are rolling escape or throw bowler um and now for your ultimate angry hornets is kind of a it's the good must have i'd say uh, this you basically want to be right up in someone's face you might want to hit them with a throw bowler knock them to the ground, run right up to their head and hit them in the thing with Angry Hornets. And this can do some really decent damage if you land it. If you land all seven in a, in the right spot, in their back or in the head, you will, yeah, you'll see their health chunk and the bleed afterwards is really, really nice as well. So, um, yeah, Angry Hornets is great. It's just always annoying when you miss. You're like, oh, fuck. I want to, I want it on a lower cooldown. Um, but anyway, yes, Angry Hornets. Nadachi. Nadachi is a medium armor, front sort of front line, sword swinging, suckling health, um, basically very, very large two-handed samurai sword, let's say, uh, even though samurai swords are two-handed. Nadachi is just a very large samurai sword. Um, just think of it as your claymore in this game. Think of it as your claymore um, or your great sword. Even though I'd love that to be added to the game. Give us a great sword, please. Um, anyway, the Nadachi is probably the one thing I would suggest if you're a new player. It'd be one of my highest suggestions. Just because it's got a good amount of survivability. You can A lot of the abilities you can use as a... Um, things you can change them up. There's only a few that I'd say is a must-have. Um, and it suckles health, so you're not going to die that often. Uh, it does okay damage, um, yeah. Every and every time you use four, I think it's four or five abilities, you gain uh, bloodlust. That basically, uh, bloodbath, I think it is, or or something like bloodlust, um, and basically that allows you to heal even more than you're healing anyway. That means you know you you wait till you do four four abilities, and then you pull in the dragon leap or the avalanche. And you basically go back to full health. You can be at zero health to full health in one second. That's really, really nice. So I'll just go with what I've got in here because I know a lot of people play different things with this. I think Bloodthirsty, the knockdown, is a must-have uh, just to keep people on the ground. It's also a good dash. People use it as an escape. Um, I, I really like it. I think it's it's good. It's really good. 
Um, then I go for Fearless and Steadfast uh, because it is uh, removes con Days Concussion, Knockdown, and it's a um, yeah, it's just a really nice ability under the effect of uh, Bloodbath. It becomes your immunity to control effects. That I mean, that's really really nice. Um, and then and it's on a low cooldown, eight seconds. So, and then Tiger Claw, I think this is basically a must have. People, I see a lot of people just have go, have this. So, it's relative low cooldown, big sw big sweep, lots of um, lots of damage under the effects blood buff, extra 25 damage. Uh, yeah, really, really nice. Big AoE, good for taking out archers and a little knockback too. Uh, and now, in terms of ultimate. Dragon's Leap is a big charge up. This is quite good to hide behind shields and then suddenly leap into the, you know, into the group of them and knock them all over. Uh, but I see a lot of people running Avalanche. Um, that is just a huge sequence of swings. So if you've got if you've got a Bloodbath going on while you're doing this, yeah, you'll heal heal back to full. Uh, I know some people use. Um, where is it? Uh, Monstrous Blade for that extra buff for 10 seconds. So potentially that could be a good one. I don't know if that's been nerfed or buffed. Um, something happened with it that it was doing a lot of damage. Um, but as far as my knowledge of Nadachi goes, that's about it. I have not played much Nadachi games, but I can recommend it if you're a new player as a go-to as a first opening class to play. Polax. Uh, now we're back to heavy armors. Um, Polax is sort of a control class. You are looking to basically keep things knocked down, um, be a bit of a nuisance. Uh, yeah, you uh, you sort of are a relatively good hero killer because you've got a lot of abilities that are going to knock people over. Um, this one, for example, is very good for knocking multiple players over but also running around the back of shield walls and, and knocking it down with uh, Lockerbie strikes that uh, that's really really good it's really nice um, and then you've got so the the, the main abilities here is a must-have is pushback it's a uh, remove stays knocked down so you can get knocked down then come back up and push them down so is an absolute must-have um, bread and butter of Polax uh, then I go for Weapon Dance just because it's a really nice interrupt and there's a rune at the moment that makes it very, uh, you know, wide. It means it's like, yeah, a huge area and it basically just disrupts everyone. Uh, so that's that's quite nice. Does a bit of damage, uh, reduces everyone's movement speed and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, really good. But I know a lot of people go for either Grim Harvest um, for another thing to get up from the ground and reduce the enemy's defense and it's on a relatively good cooldown so that's yeah that's a good one to go for and alternatively um, Lockerbie strikes uh, sorry back to Corbin even uh, big wide slashes it's yeah it's pretty good but it's on quite a high cooldown for the return you get for it I wouldn't I don't know it's up to you really that's a very changeable ability uh, and then another one that I wouldn't probably change, I'd keep this, is old Bill Hook. This basically just pulls the person towards you and knocks them down. So you can see what's happening here. We knock down, we do a few hits all on the ground, they get up, we pull them back down. And then you got two choices here, Lockerbie Strikes, that basically is a double knockdown um, and does very, very good damage. Um, but heroes can obviously get up from it but I'd say the utility of this in the entire game in terms of um, units heroes doing all that is worthwhile taking that but I do see a lot of uh, pole axes now going for rough justice that's basically a choke and a choke is similar to the dual blades um, mark for death this means you cannot get up from it there's no abilities that can get you out you are stuck there until that ability is over uh, or your team save you or you're dead 
So if you want to focus on killing heroes, then I'd probably go for this, but you do lose out on the utility of Lockerbie Strikes. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of up to you with that. Um, yeah. It's a, in terms of being a new player and playing it, I would say yes, you can do. It's very slow. It's very slow, but um, it's good. And if you get used to it and become good at it, it can be it can be a force to be reckoned with. You can basically take out most heroes if you get them into well, if you've got good timing, that is, because it is slow. You really need to know where they're what they're doing and you know to pull them down. Uh, but once you get them on the floor, they should stay there. Um, and if you take rough justice, then you've just increased your chances of securing the kill. So yeah, really nice. Would recommend for a new player. It's also very tanky. That in the current meta is very good. Longsword and shield. This is your paladin. Uh, these players are, are loved. Everyone, uh, they are, they are great because especially a good one that actually will come by your troops and and hit it with a heal. Essentially, longswords are healers, bit of damage. Shield, they can knock down shield walls with their shield clash, clash of shields. Um, just an all-round hybrid healer buffing, a little bit of damage, helpful uh, class. Heavy armor again, so in the current meta, very nice. Um, in terms of skills, what I go with is uh, with Valor. I think this is a must have. It's just kind of your bread and butter damage, 15 cent cooldown, good good few strikes into a nice knockdown. That is quite hard to land the knockdown, but if you do, great bonus. Uh, now, Counter Strike is a new ability, uh, gets you off the ground. Um, it seems pretty good, but I know some people go for uh, uh, this one, or they used to go for this one, but it doesn't get you off the floor anymore. So um, it seems to be this or uh, counter counter attack. Sorry. So it's a kind of up to you between those two, but I'm going to go counter attack to be honest. I think it's got it looks kind of cool and it's new. Um, Right, so the next ability you've got is Mercy of Heaven. This is a complete 100% must-have. This is, if when you if you unlock this and you've come into the game, you're like, okay, I want to play Longsword and Shield. This is your first thing you unlock. You go as far down Mercy of Heaven as you can get. Let's get yourself that big heal. Um, heal well, it's not just a heal. It's a heal and a speed boost and a damage boost. It's, it's great. It's really great. And it, Knightly Vow here synergizes with um with uh well everybody it's speed you know if you see let's say you're running along you see someone run their unit back to the um back to the supply point you can actually help your team by just jumping on that unit hitting a giving them a heal hitting nightly vow just to get them back to that faster because then they're going to get back to the fight faster anyway you are just a hybrid support you do okay damage, and um, yeah, you're a solid guy. You're a solid guy if you go for this. And yes, I would recommend this as a new player. Um, you're you're definitely a special kind of player uh, if you start your game with this. Um, but yeah, and in terms of ultimates, Shield Clash, I'd say is, well, this is your support one. This knocks everyone over, knocks people off their horses, uh, knocks down shield walls can interrupt formations it's just the most use useful ult possible if you don't want to be useful and you want to go a bit selfish you can go for sally forth sally forth is actually like quite it's a knockdown on a hero but it does a lot more damage than a lot of people think like it really can do uh do a number on people but it is it is hard to land it's a lot of animation lock so but if you want to do you can do it but highly would advise shield, cl clash of shields so yeah, longsword.
Spear. Now, Spear is... It, it's a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. I think it's in a bit of a rough spot at the moment. Spear benefits massively, massively, massively from being on a horse. Uh, you basically should always be starting a fight on a horse. Uh, and you want to right-click, stab a few times, then leap off the, off the mount so the onto them, knocks them down, into a spin, into a kick. Um, as a new... You could take this as a new player. You could take this. And you would have a lot of fun, and it's quite fast, and it's nimble. Um, but... Yeah, I would I would advise it. You will end up changing, guaranteed. But it is it is a lot of fun. So your first ability you want to go for is uh, Launch March. This is just a nice little slash, and also it's when you're doing it, it acts as a block. So you can't be shot by arrows. You can't be hit while you're doing it. And it's on an eight second cooldown. Uh, removes days, knockdowns, concussions, gets you off the floor. So uh, just a generally all round great uh, great weapon. Uh, great weapon, great ability. Um, next, Hurricane Edge. This is a really good stagger and AoE ability. You jump into units with this, they'll all get staggered back. Uh, probably one of the coolest looking abilities in the game. I, I really like it. Um, yeah, Hurricane Edge. Uh, definitely, definitely worth taking. Uh, Proctor's Gift. This basically just throws your spear up and you kick it in a direction. And it is does a lot of damage. You can skewer uh, quite a few archers with this. Uh, reduces people's blocks greatly. Um, cooldown is a bit long. Personally, I think they need to lower the cooldown slightly. Maybe to 13 seconds. Um, but yeah, really nice. Sort of, there isn't a huge amount of options. I know a lot of um, some of the... Uh, spears take overhead strikes that again looks really cool it's the problem you have with spear is a lot of the abilities to have a huge animation lock and that's not good you don't really want to have this massive long section of being um, yeah being animation locked so via hurricane edge I know this is an animation lock but it's you, it's kind of movable it's moving with you as you go where a lot of them are just kind of very dead set to be honest and then the ultimate i would go for personally would be dragon's roar um dragon's roar is annoying because it sometimes because if someone's got a block up it won't do anything to the block but what you want to do is when you leap off your mount and you pin them to the ground then you want to dragon's roar into them and you'll do a lot of damage um that's very nice and the other ultimate is uh, Heaven's Fury that is terrible. Don't bother with it. Heaven's Fury is not worth going for. You're pushing an enemy back that you're trying to damage and then you push him out of range of your damage. Unless you can pin someone against the wall and, and trap them in and do this, it is totally, totally pointless. Um, yeah. I did actually see the other day a spear go without his ultimate and he went for... Um, uh, overhead strikes instead of an ultimate so uh, that was an interesting one I'm not sure how that worked out for him but uh, yeah just uh, just another thing you can do I guess yeah so Mole, 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 mole. Mole is the se is a season three unlock weapon, um, so you'll need to do challenges to get it unlocked. Uh, mole is the most dominant weapon at the moment by a long, long way. Um, it's heavy armor that's always good these days. Um, yeah, there's a lot of things you can do. I'm hoping it's going to get a little bit of a nerf soon. Um, you won't be able to unlock this weapon until level 20, I believe it is. And then obviously you've got to go through all the challenges. Um, yeah, there's, I mean, the one nice thing about Maul, I'd say, is that, well, one part from being extremely overpowered, uh, is that you have a kind of a lot of choices which way you go in terms of abilities. Um, I hate to say it, but I can recommend this to new players once you get to 20 to unlock Maul. 
because it's not hard to play. It's, it's yeah, it's just Hulk smash. Um, so in terms of abilities I go for, I've got uh, Maelstrom, um, that's basically a big uh, swingy uh, thing that makes you immune to being CC'd as you do the big twirl. Um, that's really, really nice. I've got Earth Splitter that's a big knockdown and there's a rune that makes it 25% more uh, effective uh, in terms of range. That's really, really nice. Um, and then Mighty Mornia. Now, the only bit that's it's not complicated, but it's a bit hard to grasp at the start when you if you're a new player. Basically, this you do this and then while you're in the charge... You press any of the other abilities and it will give it, it will do the ability fully charged. So, yeah, it's a it's a must have. Um, as well as uh, Mountain Breaker, this does essentially the same thing, apart from removes, it removes knockback and daze and um, stuff like that. So, yeah, you can actually have two of them. So, there's multiple different specs really with this. You can go for something like. Um, something like this that I know some people do that is uh, would be yeah mountain breaker and then I'd go like bone breaker so this is one way you can do it you go mountain breaker that is that is a uh, that's a knockback and it gets you up from a knockdown um, decreases the enemy's defense and it gives you a fully charged ability to do this and then let's say you follow it with a bone breaker that would be like um, that would be a fully charged one just a big sequence of swinging into a slam and then you would once that finishes you would do a mighty monia into a maelstrom spin um, so that's one way you could go around it the other way i've been playing was much more um with uh without um without a uh, mountain breaker uh it was more for knock knockdown earth splitter is very powerful on an eight second cooldown uh and then you have war forge a war that's you know it's animation lock and it can't you can get interrupted on it but when you hit it's like a one shot it's very very strong um so yeah i can recommend more but won't i won't like you for doing it um it's i'm staggered that it hasn't been nerfed yet really staggered um, but nonetheless, it's quite nice in the way that you have a lot of choice of abilities. Um, but it's definitely one to jump into depth with. Uh, but you will take a long time to get through the challenges unless you pay them off. Um, so, yeah, that's small. Oh, yeah, and the other other alt is grab. Um, that's how relevant it's come now because I forgot that it was a thing. But essentially, you pick up the enemy, pick up another player, and you can lob them off the walls and lob them into... Um, bring them back into units and get them killed it's uh it's very strong it's very strong but um people and people are taking the more unit killing uh way around these days so you you don't see it as much every now and then i get picked up but it's not like it used to be everyone used to be picked up last um a few seasons ago and now it's it's pure damage now Last but not least, uh, Dart Scimitar. Uh, this is an unlock weapon from Season 14. Um, and it is essentially like a dual blades in a way. Um, it's got good, good hero killing potential, but obviously in light armor, they're squishy as anything. Um, not, no abilities to choose from at all. There's, everything has the same. It's just where you want to put them. Um, yeah, it's, I, I actually could recommend this to a new player. It's very simple to play. Um, Slash and Leap is basically a high damaging stun that's on a very low cooldown. Uh, Scorpion Snare is a, another stun on a very low cooldown. Um, that also, uh, the slashing defense reduction, um, does, yeah, multiple bonuses. 
Uh, and then you've got a nice sandstorm that's a, probably the best escape, one of the best escapes in the game. Concuss, uh, removes concuss, knock down, daze, the whole lot. Leap backwards, can phase through enemies, so if you're stuck in a big shield thing, if they've got their enemies, you'll still jump back and you won't get stuck on the units, you'll go fly straight through them. That's uh, amazingly good. Kind of a long cooldown, so you use sparingly, but is very good. And then obviously the Pista Resistance, the uh, Trap Prey. Uh, this You hit him with the chain, you drag yourself over to them, and then you follow up with your, uh, your sequence of abilities that you may think, oh, but I've only got two. Well, you've actually got a right click as well that throws daggers, or it's, it's whatever they are. It kind of looks like throwing daggers. Uh, but this has another effect that reduces the cooldowns of your abilities. So the more you do this, the quicker these come off cooldown and the quicker you can do a sort of a, a lock again, another ult. Well, not ult, but you know, whatever it is. It kind of feels like a dual blade ult. Um, but yes, can recommend to a new player. Um, get this unlocked and have a bit of fun with it. It's uh, It's got good, you can do good unit damage because the slashing's so high. You've got good hero killing potential, um, but the only thing is you've got a, you're in light armor, so it'll be a bit of a trial by fire from that point of view. As I said, if you're new players, I'd definitely advise to go much more towards heavy armor uh, classes than anything. But if you were that way inclined and you wanted a uh, light assassin um, with with good escapes, then this is the one for you, ladies. Gentlemen, that's it. That's every weapon. So I hope if you're a new player, this has helped you um, sort of know what abilities to sort of put on your weapons. What I would advise, obviously, as a weapon at the start of the game. Um, and um, yeah, just to, just if you haven't even downloaded it yet, a new look at, uh, at abilities and um, a new look at the weapons to make you, you know, decide when you do download when you do eventually come and join us in Conqueror's Blade, um, you've got an idea of what you want to play. Um, so thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.